Okay, in the last video, we have explained the structure of this uh, uh, sequence that includes the masters and two shots. And these two shots or sequence uh, in this particular case are associated to this camera and to, to this other camera. Okay. So have a look at that video if you haven't, so, uh, you haven't done so before. What we are going to do in this video is um, uh, ex start a new, a new sequence, okay? So I'm assuming that uh, you, you know how to add cinematic cameras. Uh, cinematic cameras uh, are here in cinematic, okay? Cine camera actor, okay? Uh, camera rig. Alternatively, you write camera you have all the things, okay, like camera, uh, but we want this one, the cinematic camera, okay, which uh, has other properties and, and it's the one we are going to use in this particular case. What is important to understand is that in this particular case, we are going to work only inside sequencer we are not going to work on the level. So the cameras are on the level. Yes, they have to be there, but we are not going to manipulate the properties um, here on details. We are going to do it through a sequencer, okay? So as commented before, we, we are going to have uh, two different panels. Okay, so what you have to do is just going uh, here and you see layout, two panes, okay? And then later in this one, I'm going to put perspective in both, but in this one, I'm going to, uh, well, in this one, maybe better, I'm going to put the cinematic view, okay? This particular case, I'm going to use the, well, this one, and, okay. This just to help me uh, to set up better the frame. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do now is to add a cinematic, okay? I, uh, the ones that are already done are here, so I, I can use this in content, uh, okay? So uh, uh, I'm going to add level sequence, okay? Sequence 03, okay? And what we have here is, uh, you know already because you have work with a sequencer inside the level design. What we are going to do now is just a pure cinematic uh, sequence. So we, we need to add the, the, the actor, which is going to be the, the first camera. Okay, so one way to do it maybe more simple is, is select the camera either here or in the other panel, this one. Okay, so for example, this one, we, we could just, you know, just hide that. Okay, so we work with the, with the camera, okay, that we want, we don't have any problem. In this particular case, this is a little annoying for me, so I'm going to uh, just hide that. It's on, okay, so level, Editor here. Okay. Okay, you here. Ah, here in the panel editor. Okay. With that, uh, should be a little better. Well, selecting the, the camera and then in track, we are going to add the camera, it's already selected because we selected that in the viewport. Okay, so automatically it creates the camera cuts. That is what the camera is going to present with that particular shot. Okay, and this is already, uh, is not activated, but if you activate that, it's here on the right. Okay, this is what the cinematic uh, is, is currently recording. So my advice is don't touch anything here. Just touch the properties here and keep it simple, okay? 
try to uh, not navigate the camera, try to just use these controls, okay? In my particular case, I sometimes use pen and paper to note down uh, coordinates or values of the focus or, or the, um, um, the, the focal length or any other parameter, because that way I, I can calculate better, okay, in relation to the timeline. So one important thing to understand when you are working with cameras in sequencer is that there are, uh, what you will notice, there are two transforms, okay? This one is the, the whole component of the camera, and this is just for the camera component. So this would be basically the relative precision. Uh, what I do usually to not be manipulating both or to be mistaken by them is, is to lock one of them. Okay, this way I cannot modify these properties, so I'm not going to change that. It doesn't mean you cannot change the position of the camera. So if you see here, this is the position of the camera. When you change this, it will, it will be modified, okay? So I'm going to, yeah, basically just focus on this character, okay? If um, I want to register this particular position, I just select that S to create the, the keyframes. Okay, you want obviously to focus this. So here in the camera options, uh, you have um, focus settings, and then you have this element, which is the focus. Okay, uh, that way detects the object and focus perfectly the object. Okay. Um, this value should be the same value that you have here, but if the camera is not binding, sometimes it doesn't correspond. So what you can do is copy and paste the value and the same with other values, okay? So try to, to uh, be organized on that. As always, when you do animations in any 3D software, try to minimize the number of keyframes. It's not worthy to do a messy animation, try to, uh, do very simple and then later manipulate the time uh, the time curves, okay, in order to make that more uh, effective, okay. So just that. So uh, with this, uh, I'm starting here and then later I'm moving to the other character, okay. And I'm going to do something like, uh, uh, do you see? Manipulating the, the camera here didn't change the position here, okay? So what you want is to manipulate the uh, camera here on the sequence, uh, okay? So try to use these controllers, okay? And uh, if you want to pilot the camera and it doesn't bind, just copy and paste the values. I think it's the best I can say. I think I prefer to do everything through sequence. Uh, Okay, so rotation, trying to fix something the camera. Okay, so obviously when you um, uh, when you move the character around you need to uh, uh, to change the focus as well. So be sure that the focus distance has also a keyframe. So in this case, this one, in this other case, I'm going to create the uh, focus. Okay, select the camera. Okay, select the camera. Why? It doesn't focus distance. Okay. Here you are. Okay, so focus the character and create the keyframe. Okay, so supposedly it's changing the keyframe. I don't know why it didn't change. Okay, that way. 
Yeah, probably uh, I should copy and paste the value because I didn't do that before. So just to be sure it's the same value. Okay, so that way, second shot, the third shot, we're going to go to the other character. Okay. 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 That way. And again, create the keyframes of the position and uh, the focus distance as well, which I'm going to. Okay, so that way we have the, the, the shot covering the three characters. Okay, um, what I did in the, in the previous project is to have sequences for each shot. I think it, it, is, it seems sometimes to be a, a little more work, but I think it, it is easier to manage the information that way and to incorporate, change or modify the, the, the for example, the, the speed of the camera, so the time you, you spend in an action, if you do that uh, in different sequence. It is not expected to be like that. So uh, if you want to do that in, the, in different sequence, uh, the way you do it is you just create another uh, master sequence here on cinematic. Uh, don't do a, a master sequence. I'm, I'm just adding little sequence, okay? So the way uh, it works is just on, on a sequence, you have to add a shot track, okay? And then here you can add the different sequence you have already done, okay? Alternatively, what you have, what you can always do is, you can always uh, go to a sequence and then, you know, just add another camera, okay? And you binding, bind another camera and change this uh, it, this is for when you have to do a lot of shots and when you have to be very fast. Uh, the other it's when you have uh, complicated shots like a very long uh, uh, camera pan or a, uh, uh, or different systems like a rail rig or whatever. So do uh, whatever uh, it is better for you, whatever it's more easy or more fast or more convenient. My advice is try to be organized. So whatever you do, try to have some kind of materials, pen and paper, you know, uh, or a diagram in PowerPoint or whatever. Try to think what you are doing instead of just playing with the camera, because uh, if not, you're going to have a, you know, a very tough time trying to articulate something logical, okay? So I'm going to repeat the process. Uh, add level sequence, okay. Uh, sequence, oh sorry, sequence oh six, okay. I'm going to add uh, the camera that I select. So I select the camera, okay. This is the camera. This is the shot, okay. But what you notice is that uh, there is no action, okay. Uh, so you need to add the actor. So in this case, I'm going to add uh, that particular actor, Maria. So I'm going to add uh, Maria to uh, this. And well, you also notice that Maria is not doing anything because you need to add the animation as well. Uh, if you remember the previous lesson, uh, we have associated to that skeleton different animations depending on, you know, uh, well, it, it, it has to be associated uh, sooner or later, no? So in this particular case, uh, it has one from Xamo, so I'm going to use that one, okay? And this is the duration of the animation here. You can repeat that a couple of times, but depending on the action, okay? So now, uh, when you, you play this, the, the animation is already acting on the skeleton, okay? So that way you can uh, articulate the different animations here for the different characters. And one of the actors is, is the camera, which is recording. As I say, this could be part of a, another sequence and articulated as, uh, 
in terms of level master sequence and and another sequence okay as you want you can also bind here another camera okay so uh, i duplicate the camera okay uh, oops, what is okay i maybe say i'm Duplicate the camera, okay. So that way, this other camera can be uh, uh, then later bind here, so I can add camera two, or I can add camera two here, okay. So this way, uh, this is the camera uh, one, and this is the camera two, which I'm going to. Uh, modify okay okay and then that way we will have the change of the camera which is not very spectacular okay, to, to try to make something with a little more sense okay yeah changing the character for example or to that character, for example. Which is, uh, okay. So that way, one is sitting down, the other is doing another thing, okay? Yeah, then later you notice that you want to finish this uh, action before changing the camera. So maybe you want to keep on with this camera a little longer, and then later you change to that one. Okay, so it helps also in terms of montage to the, in terms of edition to have this different uh, camera system here. The last thing that uh, it might be uh, important to say is from this particular sequence you can export, okay, render this movie. Uh, so basically it's supposed that your project should be exported using this, okay. So this way you can export the result as um, a high quality movie and then you can upload that to uh, to canvas and your personal portfolios. So um, this is something that maybe we can cover in another uh, tutorial if needed to talk about uh, quality and um, parameters and all these things.